Welcome to the Heal with Kelly podcast. I'm Kelly Noonan Gorse, and every week I speak to the leading doctors, healers, spiritual teachers, and scientists to find out what is truly possible when it comes to healing. I also interview real people with extraordinary healing stories. My philosophy is what's possible for one is possible for all. Thank you for joining me on this beautiful journey of remembering our divine nature and tapping into the truths that shall set us free. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Heal with Kelly podcast. I am very excited for today's guest. I know you hear that every time, but um, I'm with Skye, who is a French quantum healer, which I don't know. I just feel like we all need some quantum healing right now. Um, He spent three years in silence to master his energy. Three years. I couldn't do one week, let alone three years. Um, During that time, he developed energy and mindset techniques fully rooted in the zero point energy field. He helps people find their purpose and break free from mental, emotional, and physical limitations to fully align with their divine potential. Came to the right podcast. Through his three month program, Potentia, Potentia? Mm Participants quickly and very regularly overcome lifelong traumas and chronic ailments like cancer, Crohn's, neuropathy, chronic fatigue, herpes, depression, addiction, abuse, etc. Sky highly recommends practicing um, his simple and powerful psychoenergetic technique, the double vortex, to eliminate blockages, traumas, and limiting beliefs. He's also about to publish his memoir, Three Years in Silence, which I cannot wait to read, but we'll touch on today. And he's developing a sci-fi docu-series, Gaia 3.0, a powerful story merging psychoenergetics, remote viewing, and science to reveal a near future where humanity taps into its divine potentials and ushers in heaven on earth. Very cool. (laughs) Welcome to the show. (laughs) Thank you. Okay, well, I would love to know what your story is that led you, who was Sky before the three years in silence? Walk us through the three years of silence and, and where you are today. Mm. Yeah, there's been a lot of transformation, <laughs> <laughs> as you guess. <laughs> like to make it short, because yeah, I just wrote a, a good, uh, yeah. pretty large book about it. But I grew up in the south of France, on the French Riviera. Mm. Pretty lucky, pretty happy. You know, I, had it, I had it easy, I would say, you know, for a long time. And I uh, did a, t- a business school, top business school in Paris. Uh, I had no interest in making money, you know, in making business. So I was happy, but not happy also. <laughs> I didn't really find any purpose. I was not spiritual at all. So I was questioning, questioning, what well, is it just that? Is it just it? You know? And so right after I graduated, when I tr- was 24 years old, I had a pretty spontaneous and strong awakening oh. to uh, it's like I started hearing a voice, which is my voice, you know, but speaking really clearly and really telling me who I was, why I came back, what I'm going to do, showing me the future, <laughs> like all type of revelation, like a bit like you can have in a plant medicine journey, but yeah. daily and nightly. Yeah. Wow. So I had that for one year like that when I, I prepare most of the work I'm doing now, book, movies, all of that. I saw many events in the future, you know, I saw... Uh, uh, a great awakening in 20 years. So that voice, which I call God, was telling me in 20 years, people are going to be like you because I was an alien in Paris. <laughs> All my friends were not like that. No one around me. You know? They told me people are going to awakening, which is now. You know? There's so many people who are... Is, is this year the 20 years from then? It was in 2001, then? yeah. So it's right after okay, 2021, wow. after the pandemic, when people started really like, yeah, like awakening. Wow. Many, many people, not everyone, of course. but. So now I keep meeting my people, you know, it's amazing. But for a long time, it's been a lonely journey. I didn't have so many people like that around me. And uh, so then I went on a long journey. And so for one year, I had like that, it was ecstasy. I was living living in bliss. Like you have your best friends, you know, which is really tough team, <laughs> constantly with you, showing you seeing massive synchronicities. I did the first healing, yeah, actually, with someone, it's called like dry leprosy, you know, like in Paris, by, by discussing. You know, it's, uh, I was, I didn't believe in any spirit, in any God. I just saw that, uh, so I knew everything was possible when you would align, you know, with the right energy, basically, where you come together. 
And, um, but progressively I lost that. And then I went on a very long journey when I was completely and grounded. I couldn't go back to what I was. I couldn't, yeah. you know, You're kind of stuck between two worlds. Stuck between two worlds. And so I was, after a few years, diagnosed with bipolarity, which was basically higher self and lower self. <laughs> it's wow. not so complicated. But for the psychiatrist, that's what it was with schizophrenic tendencies, because I had visions, you know, obviously. And so I didn't really want, you know, to take pills my whole life. And I knew what I was. I, I just didn't know how to, to reconcile that. Yeah. And so for years, I had a lot of discipline. You know, I would start waking up you know, at five every morning, you know, like doing push ups, stretching, yoga, you know, very clean, clean life, everything. And I, and I still had this too. I was realigning myself a lot. I was not depressed anymore, not all of that, but there was still that, that disconnection between the two self. And so you, instead of taking pills, you just went into I a very myself, disciplined yeah. life to yeah. keep yourself on the track. Yeah, I met a psychiatrist, I, says, I saw that, and he was one of the best in the South of France in Nice. I said, he's not gonna help me. It's, I'm just gonna go, you know, like, like, like being sick. And I know, I know I can do that. And so, so it's been a long and hard journey. Now I can help people do that much quicker because <laughs> I understand how it works. But at the time, I had no one really guiding me. So, and at some point, I was everything was coming along. I had movie project, big trilogy. So I saw vision of the future again. I saw a big pandemic, you know, happening. You did. <laughs> I did that. I described the whole thing. I have a copyright. <laughs> the whole phenomenon, how it would happen, and. I saw after what would happen. So the next decades, basically, I saw the wars that are happening now. Also, all of that, like a big dismantlement, basically, uh, of the of society, of species, of nations, and then artificial immortality. You know, basically, a way to like uh, boost, you know, our body with AI, with biotechnologies, which was completely not natural, you know, completely technologic. And I knew we had that power inside. You know, and so. So I asked for to God, you know, to my guidance, how 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 I can I become one, really, because I had experienced that ten years before. You mm -hmm. know, I know what it was, but I had not done the work, you know, li literally for it. So in this life, at least, and so that's when I received that to like forsake everything I was doing. You know, my big project. I had eight directors, producers. They all wanted to do the movie. <laughs> Each time I would pitch it, I was in Los Angeles. Would tell me, Oh yeah, I want to do it. Wow. It was my baby. It was eleven years I was working on it. Uh, family, friends, uh, fiance. I had to like, give up everything, basically. Wow. And so I end up, uh, yeah, sitting one year on a chair, like 23 hours a day, roughly, sometimes three days without moving, eyes open most of the time, like we are now, and like going into this zero point, you know, what I call now the zero point or the source, you know, really to that, that deep, deep, deeper space where things become. Uh, manageable you no know, it's not not agreeable because my body was falling apart i would yeah. barely eat you know, so i was like really emaciated i had uh, my nails were long like oh <laughs> my hair was long like oh i was looking like like in a cave in the himalaya you know yeah. some hermits but i was in los angeles <laughs> in wow. i had no more voice <laughs> i couldn't really speak anymore so it was like a complete complete dismantlement of my upbringing of my conditioning of my my body as well you know and just channeling energy, 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 like walking against cold, against, because it was LA, but it was, I was bare chest, you know, barefoot at night, the window open, it get cold the whole night, you know, mm -hmm. on the chair like that. And uh, hot during the day, it's very hot in Echo Park, you know, probably 110 degrees, was oh, the whole day, no water, you know, like no food. So just, just using energy basically to, to trans, transform, to transmute, you know, the, the pain, the hunger, the thirst, the sleep, you know, as well, the boredom, Oh, as well, yeah. The thoughts, so energy was. And the voice answer. was continuing. Or they no? were not really voice anymore. Okay. The voice was at the beginning. Okay. You know, that's the voice I call that my father. You know, it's more the, the spirit, the, the father aspect of God, the male aspect that that spirit that sees and guides. That was more the mother work. The mother is more to me the energy. It's like okay. really the the yeah the, the shakti. The Hindu call that. You know, that's really. So it was most mostly a silent work. The voice was only my man who was still resisting, complaining, which I had know to let let it speak you know like constantly okay it's hot it's hot i want to eat you know <laughs> so <laughs> constantly let it go into the background to the background until it would calm down and, 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 and disconnect so it was mainly yeah mainly energetic work and dissociating from from the thought mind from the physical mind because you have different level you know emotional mind as well to stay into that silence to stay into that space and to be able to embody that yeah like completely, completely 
So that was um, <laughs> one year. <laughs> I thought I was done after that. <laughs> yeah. I could go back to the world, you know, and, but God has a, other plan for me. So then I started walking. I went to an ashram in Northern California and I would walk. So I would walk 10, 14 hours a day, you know, like morning to night, basically. I had a breakfast this time, like a good normal breakfast. And then no food, no water, no drink, no rest. I would just walk until usually the, the evening, not the night. So long, long distance, 20, 30 miles, you know, like uh, in the cold, in the heat, same thing. <laughs> oh <laughs> one, my God. One t-shirt, one jeans, one, uh, one uh, pair of shoes. So winter and summer would be the same on the road. They all know me around there. I was the walker. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> this is wild. So same thing, transmitting pain because I had pain in my foot, you know, I had a lot of injuries. and. Yeah, the, the thirst, the hunger, the, not the hunger, we're not feeling much, but the thirst sometimes and the heat, you know, a lot. So staying in that space, staying in that space, same thing, silencing the mind, who like, why am I doing that? I mean, I did like a <laughs> top business school in front. Yeah. Then I was like, I made it to Hollywood. I was about to do yeah, you know, you're about trilogy, to visit like the Matrix, literally. <laughs> the next Lord of the Rings. Uh, yeah, so that's what the plan. People told me, wow, it's like, yeah, it's like that. And. And now I'm like just walking, basically, and and I would get all these yeah these insights, not much of voice, but yeah a lot of deeper deeper understanding, you know, like which I wanted to share at some point. I was like, I mean, I'm here to share that, and and uh, no, the guidance where you keep walking, like wow. you surrender, you surrender. And so another good year, I think even over a year, I walked on the street every day, on like highway, country highways, and then at some point something surrender fully inside of me you know something accepted you know okay well maybe i'm gonna walk until the rest of my life it's my past maybe i'm gonna inspire people to do something like that it's like this you know something like fully i had already surrendered at, at, at a deeper level but it was in my body also wow. my body consciousness and and i accepted fully you know and from then poof, like such energy starting rising you know, like it was like i was like flawed with energy with love you know with joy it was like real uh, what i had felt you know like 12 years before 13 years yeah. before but now with the work of it and it was solid it was steady and it was beautiful really beautiful and i was like oh, okay now i'm done <laughs> and I'm gonna go back, you know, and share my. Uh, and now then I started running because I was so happy I did the run. So I run maybe eight, ten hours, probably fifty miles, which was nothing for me because I was walking so much. I was just still with my jeans, you know, my shorts. I would just go a bit faster, you know, like on the forefront. And I was so happy. I said, "Wow, it's amazing to run. It's nicer than walking." Yeah. You know? And uh, and I thought it was it was a feat and it was a nice conclusion to it. But then I spent another year basically like uh, running six months straight. Right after I would run 40, 50 miles on average. Basically, what did I you did. get in running shoes and shorts? Yeah, then I got okay, I good, found good. <laughs> somebody offered me on the road. It was nice because I didn't use money. So yeah. people would stop to me. You may use a lot of pair of shoes. I say, yeah, I mean, I use them a lot. <laughs> so yeah. barely no so. So people would give me shoes. So I would like receive gifts like that. And yeah, like. Uh, every day 40 feet sometimes 70 80 miles sometimes 20 30 once i did 100 miles you know like uh, wow. i wouldn't really measure i understood that later but like always and uh, so i was very little food very little water i was drinking some water at the time very little so tapping into that energy you know in the heat 110 degrees sometimes uh. 100 regularly in the summer canyons it was many canyons so, yeah. so no flat you know like just up up and down it's wild and i was happy you know i was really like uh really happy actually but i was like okay I'm were you like how long i'm gonna yeah I was 10 pounds I, w I was not uh, not very sick yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i had a lot of energy but yeah yeah like very light so and then yeah then i i i went to boulder as you can Colorado. i was in northern california and i received a you know, calling to go there and that's when i started more sharing you know like so i would still run a lot maybe a marathon maybe 25 then maybe half you know 12 miles so for one year i was running a lot but then I started more, yeah, coming back progressively into the world. Not, not yeah. fully yet, no, yeah. more, uh, yeah, more still uh, experientially and recreating music, writing, all of that. And it's a couple of years that I started really doing the healing I do now. You know, so I've been healing a lot of people, more guiding, you know, more a bit like more in India, you know, when you guide people to the yeah. past and help unlock a lot of traumas, a lot of finding purpose, psychological blockages, more with younger people, you know, students in Boulder. And um, and recently, a few years ago, I started more my practice that I'm doing now, which 
starting healing the body a lot actually okay like like all type of yeah all type of disease so wow that's the short version wow <laughs> i mean that is such a wild story <laughs> <It> was wild. <laughs> <laughs> but you look so happy you yeah, look, yeah you yeah. are light and you're so yeah. clear yeah. um so what does a day look like for you now here in la well now it's a lot of work my day <laughs> now it's like yeah. it's not it's not the silence anymore it's uh I mean, I have, I have, I have a group now which I work with. I have a three months program, so I have people, you know, which I check in, you know, like regularly. I do a mix of group work and one on one. So I have, I try to not have too many one on ones because then it's starting having headaches also. Yeah. So I'm like, uh, so juggling with this thing. Now I open like, the community also, so that's beautiful actually. We have an amazing community. So same thing, checking with everyone. Really now I'm, I'm mainly transferring these tools. You know, I have yeah. like compacted all of that in because it's 22 years not just three years in science for 22 years since i awakened i've been constantly working on myself yeah. almost day. i mean day and night they were not really what we call life you know they were just a transformation so now i'm also learning to live you know, and i have an amazing wife you now we like just bought a nice house in portugal we were to, to do like opening a healing center also over there we live also in ohio in california so having more life you know, like which for me is new but from that place you know, and so so a lot is that is allowing myself more 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 time you no know, more simple yeah. pleasure as well but a lot of work as well because i have all these things coming now like a book a movie yeah <laughs> like the, the program all of this so so i need to do them so it's like learning to bring that peace you know, and that quietness and then calm into the daily life as again yeah. into working with a computer into you know doing stuff uh, yeah. <laughs> on social media on things so I had to relearn that to learn that because I was never on social media or anything like that. Yeah, so, so super for me fun. It, it was a big one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had to force myself. <laughs> Trust me, I get it. Um, <laughs> not very good there, yeah, but <laughs> so you're you're clearly no longer exhibiting bipolar and schizophrenia. What what was the message? Or, or I I just think that's so brilliant. I mean, obviously you walked through a fire. Very much your story reminded me of Jesus's. <laughs> pilgrimage to the desert or the silence and the, the fasting and and that you know <clears throat> alchemical process but what do did you become aware of with bipolar and schizophrenia because so many people today are dealing with that yeah what what do you see in general with that diagnosis yeah i never label myself like that you know i use that now mainly for the question you're asking to help people get out of it basically because we all are bipolars you know like we all have two polarities yeah <laughs> which is a higher self and a lower self that's how we built for some people it's more extreme you know mm. like and so the dissonance the discrepancy is gonna be strong and so y it seems like you're two person because one is really connected you know to your higher self to again one is really disconnected it's, it's not two people there you know it's just because it's just one person one identity that's going to go more into that lower polarity or into that higher polarity and so when you understand that, that you basically, you have that thing that's moving between the polarities, you know, that's uh, talk about Christ. For me, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, that's how I see it. You have the, the Father, which is you at a deeper level, or the Mother, you know, it's like mm -hmm. really God within yourself. The Son or the Daughter, which is you at a lower level, embodied, you know, it's, it's, mm. body. So it's another form of consciousness. It's within it, it's completely embedded, it's not separate. And you have the Holy Spirit, which is that, that conscience, you know, that life force, basically, that's getting to travel between these two, you know, and it's not like that, it's more circular, you know, between these two, basically, uh, polarities, between mm. these two identities. So we are three in one, and, and we can realign that, basically, by really understanding that, by accepting that, yeah, at some point, you are brilliant, you are connecting, <laughs> you are yeah. tapped in, you are in your great self, and at some point, you're pretty lame, <laughs> and yeah. you fall, and you don't know, <laughs> and you're confused, and it's all you. You know, it's like not rejecting all of that. It's all you. you yeah. know? And so, so like really making peace with that, learning to work with that, and not separating, not labeling it as a, you know, as a sickness. You know, mm -hmm. something like that. It's just something. Before they would call that, you know, the dark night of the soul, or the different terms, you know, in the idea of the journey or the, the alchemical process. That's what it is. So reconciling that. Yeah. You know? A lot of work I do now is that, like being gentle, accepting, looking at it, going through it. And that's how progressively you. Yeah, you, you heal and you become one for whatever that means. You, know, you yeah. always have different aspects of yourself anyway. Yeah, like, uh, I feel like that's the messaging coming through me in the last 
few months more and more loudly, but it's and, and different teachers are talking about it, but it, it's ex- accepting and embracing all the polarities, like the shadow, not rejecting the shadow yeah. or, you know, and I know everybody has to do the shadow work and going in it, but even just labeling it shadow and it's just, it's literally two polarities that yeah. have to exist, the light and perhaps the shadow is, is just the empty space waiting for creation and light to come in, but all just that embrace and flow of, of energy. We need the two polarities for energy mm-hmm. to move, correct? So that's that's super cool. That, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, the shadow is you, is no one else. Yeah. Uh, basically. It's like people who believe in God and they say, why is there a devil? <laughs> yeah. yeah, God is everything. He's creating all yeah. of that, you know? And so within us, it's the same. We are our own you know, little gods. We are our own creators. So we have that that shadow, that law, however you call that, that's mm-hmm. here to help us. Basically yeah. work through, through these things, point us when we have wounds, when we have holes, when we have weaknesses, to look at them. Yeah. And that's really what I, I, I teach to people. It's like, look at it, don't, don't run away from it. Uh, if you run away from fear, you make it bigger because you're withdrawing your energy. And so that fear is becoming like a big ghost, uh, like within yourself. If you stop and you face it, uh, like you look at it, all your energy, all your light is going to like fill that gap, fill that void, uh, fill that fear. And so you can see it, you can understand it, and you can transmute it, and you don't need it anymore. Mm. Same for sickness, for trauma, it, it's the same thing. It's always something that needs to be looked at, tended to, transmuted, and then it goes. Okay. And then you move on to the next one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, it's an ongoing process. So how would you work with someone like, you know, cancer is obviously far too common, but there's a lot of fear around that particular diagnosis. Mm. What What... What are some of the realizations or how do you kind of approach someone that's dealing with that mm-hmm. particular I energy? Think it depends a lot on the people first. You know, the people who have faith, it's easier. The people who are very afraid, it's harder. But everybody can transform it. You know, and I had someone, she was stage four lung cancer. You know, and uh, she came to me and I look at her, I said, you're going to heal. Uh, I could see that. You know, she had everything she wanted to heal. You know, she was trying everything. She, she had everything. You know, like... Uh, and she healed with the like, three sessions in my program, you know, like, and, uh, but she applied herself consistently. You know, mm-hmm. She's been using all the tools, all she was already doing, plus what I've been bringing to her, and, and she had non-evidence of disease after two months, you know, three months. Two months, yeah. three months, stage I four. I think so, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it worked really, really quick. What uh, is your, think. can you describe your program? The, is this the Potentia? Yeah, Okay. Yeah, it's called Potentia, and uh, it's, uh, it's a three months program, basically, and so in, in this program, I'm really, bringing the core things that I think everyone should know, you know about themselves. So the, to live a life aligned, you know, like with the divine. So first is mastering yourself, mastering your relationship, your living relationship, and mastering your mission, you know, your purpose. Why are you here on earth? So the first month, we really go through the, the self. So unlocking that core trauma, you know, like within yourself, that thing that blocks you to be fully, you know, in your power, fully happy, you know, fully. So we go straight for that. Oof. We unplug it so people <laughs> feel a deep peace, you know, basically, usually with us, because your power is peace. It's like yeah. a being fully relaxed, you know, fully relaxed, not fake relaxed, fully. Yeah, yeah. They so understand, you know, why, why they here, many different things which you need to experience. I cannot describe them. But then we connect with your intuition, because that's the key, what, to find your own teacher, to become your own teacher inside, like really discerning when it's my ego and uh, my ego mind or it's my, my soul. We learn to work with energy, mastering your energy, which the double vortex technique, we may do a, a little try later. And uh, and really becoming ownership of your life, owner of your life, not mm-hmm. a victim anymore. Yeah. Of the system, of your parents, of your exes, of your children, you know, of, yeah. of anyone, just of your disease yeah. taking power. You know, like uh, over that understanding that everything you can transform, you've been choosing as a soul to go through it. Why? Oh, okay, and how can I achieve that? So. That's the first month. And then we go here for relationship with the divine, with yourself, you know, with your ego, Mm -hmm. like making peace, unifying, you know, higher self and lower self, not dividing it with your lover, potential lover also, with your family, your friends. So divinizing all this relationship from a true place, really authentic place. And the last one, we go more to the mission, basically why we already tackled that, but really we dive deep into that. Why are you here on this planet? Because if you don't have that, it's kind of hard. You yeah. know, just go like blinded. Mm-hmm. When you have that, I had that when I worked, you know, 20 years ago, it helped me go through many hells because 
I know why I was here, I know what I was supposed to bring to the world, you know, I know what I was supposed to live. And so, yeah, it changes, but I had that vision. You know? So a lot I do now in my work, more than the healing, it's expansion toward the future. It's like teaching people how to go meet your future self. You know, and the whole movie, it's about that. It's like mm. connecting with your future, really not with your imaginations, going there, because there's a timeline you can access, feeling in, in your bone, in your skin, you know, how you can be the highest version of yourself and bringing back that to today. So you can already work toward that, you know, like optimize basically your past toward that. So, so that's what we're doing, you know, like so this journey. Oh it's a beautiful. Uh, <laughs> I need to sign up. <laughs> that's amazing. That sounds amazing. <laughs> Just to go back to your question on the cancer, because I oh think yeah. I, we skipped to the program and, th and there was something in important there. You okay. know, wh what I, I would recommend to people, when, when, some, when you come to a doctor and the doctor tells you you have a cancer, Oh, like, like there's a, a sort of condemnation like that, you know, and everything you read, everything you see, that energy for me is the worst of everything. It's much worse than these little cells that are not happy in your body that you can shift. Mm -hmm. It's like that, that sentence, you know, like, wow, now it's like life or death and many yeah. deaths. You know? And we've, we've um, collapsed cancer diagnosis with death sentence. So there's a, there's a very, we need to separate the two completely yeah. because that convergence is this dark energy like you said there's this fear yeah in still gator yeah because you're constantly fueling your, your body with these thoughts so mm -hmm. if you thought are positive you fuel it with positive if you say negative it's negative so what the body is receiving when you say that wow most of the time you didn't even know <laughs> so you start increasing 10 100 times more the power of these cells basically mm -hmm. which uh, which are which are deteriorating and so so to me, it's really like, okay, you have a challenge now. You, know? <laughs> you, have like, you have actually an opportunity to become, that's how I see it. People come to me with cancer, Crohn's disease, Lyme disease, you know, different things. It's the same for me. I don't care what they have. You have something that your body is telling you that needs to be transmitted now. You know? So let's look at it. You know? Let's understand what's there. You know? And there's a process to do that. And when you understand it, let's do your work to take care of you that. And and everything can shift if you really want it. You can. You now have these techniques. If people do it daily, you know, because for me, it's, these people have been just healing like that. Great, you know. But to me, it's not satisfying. I want people to do the work to become really something yeah. else. It's not just walking, you know, a miracle. It's not a miracle. It's a yeah. process. It's giving the tools for people to do that. And also, if the people don't do the own the work, that the the lesson will come back in a different it way. Would, right? Exactly. We, we have to learn. We've got to go through the realization, the awakening, the learning to to feel the shift. If someone else helps us and, you know, facilitates the healing or guides us through, that's fantastic. Yeah. But if we're not doing the actual work, it's, I imagine it's gonna come back in some different iteration. In another way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's why all these machines, you know, this it's great. Sometimes you need to use that, you know, you cannot always <laughs> yeah. have that power or have that time. But you need to use, as I say, whatever you use, knowing that you are the one doing the core of the work. Even if you use a machine, even if you take a pill, even if you do all of that, you are the one using your energy. It's what I teach to people to amplify that. You, know, yeah. you really are the one do, doing this healing. And and if you do it consistently, it's, it, I mean, it's crazy, actually. You yeah. know, like uh, what I've been seeing at the beginning, I was surprised. You know, HIV, herpes, you know, like uh, HPV, like neuropathy. It's like I had many different cases. I'm not special. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. I'm not a doctor, but I just see the person. And, 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 and it's just the dis-ease that there's a misalignment in a the misalignment, body. Misalignment, yeah. yeah. What, what is it? Basically, often there's not even name for that, but we find what is it in, in yeah. your life. You know, like this chronic fatigue, this, this all this like panic attack. It's, yeah. it's just a, a, a misalignment you yeah. know, of the person. And so when you find that alignment, what the body has done is you know this work in, in informing you. It doesn't need to be there anymore. Yeah. So you flush it and, and you heal and you move on. <laughs> and your body, but that's how intelligence our bodies are. And sometimes smart, we uh, need support and, and reflection and a mirror to, to help us go on that in investigation and discovery. Um, I'm so excited now to work <laughs> with you. Um, I thought we, before we started recording, you mentioned, you know, if something comes up in your own body, now you immediately go, okay, it's a conversation. What's the message? Mm -hmm. So this morning, you had some stomach trouble, mm -hmm. some digestive issue. Can you can you share what you shared with me earlier? Um, because I think that shift in perspective alone, mm -hmm. or perception, that if you know, it's just it's so clear that the body is constantly speaking to us. Mm -hmm. 
and most of us don't take the time or are even aware to learn that language. We're just like, oh, it's a symptom. Let's let's take the yeah. easy thing to silence the symptom. But it's like, oh no, that's the body trying to speak to us. Mm -hmm. That's something is off. So can you share what your experience was this morning with your stomach? Yeah, this morning I noticed it was since yesterday, and I was like, how come? You know, usually my body process stuff really quick, and uh, I say, okay, I need to do something about it. So I come. I usually localize, you know, if I have a digestion, I, I, I feel you know, a, a microbe or to something toxic, you know, toxins or whatever that is. I can see, you know, a little entity or frequency and, and I destroy it, I flush it and I'm good. And so I did that, but it didn't work so well. Oh, like I was like, oh, okay, so there's something deeper, basically. You know, I, and I did what I apply because of course, also with energy, you can just use it as a tool. But so I went, okay, what my body is telling me now? You know, and I. And I saw some things that I didn't want to look at, major choice you know, that I had to make and, and, uh, and, and many other things to do as well. So I wouldn't spend the time you know, to sit with it. I would just put it there. So I went into it and that was maybe one of the last things really scaring me, you know, which could actually create me imbalance you know, mm. like, like that. So I faced it this time. I really faced it. I went into it. It was an old, old wound, which is very personal. So I won't share it here, but I had like to really face it. And then it it leaves, you know? and like my body was feeling, and me also, you know, I realized, wow, it's, I didn't want to look at that, and I had to look at it. You know? like oh. I had to really look at it, and and it leaves, yeah, and then I felt all the light, the energy flowing again. You know? I didn't even really have to kill those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it you didn't have to zap the microbes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, parasites. automatically, and it and it was good, and so that's what I do constantly. Usually, I don't let stuff become in too much. Like, but sometimes it happens also. You're busy and you don't pay attention. And I believe if you apply that, I'm surprised by what people do. You know? Like, because you could say, okay, he spends three years in silence. He, he now he's been doing extreme things, things. But I have people in my group that didn't do like me at all. Yeah. <laughs> they just start playing, you know, the vortex, uh, playing things, looking at it, and boom. You know, some they can create a ball of energy, heal their knee. You know, they're like, uh, yeah, <laughs> they're meniscus. Others like like deep traumas, other like a herpes, you know, like a, just just by applying that and looking. And so we we all have these tools, you yeah. know. And, and I believe I heard in your podcast you say uh, if if someone do it do it, some everybody can do it, yeah. you know, something like that. Yeah, exactly. That's what I believe. You know, if I do it, you can do it. You know, if someone else, if I see someone <laughs> when is doing something, I say, okay, I can do that. Too. Yeah, it just inspires me basically. So. Yeah, and g thank God we don't have to go through three years of silence no. and running <laughs> 20, 50 miles a day. Thank you for doing that prep work for us. Um, I got emotional when you were going through that process and like, I mean, our bodies are so incredible and inte intelligent and we've been so, our relationship with our bodies, especially in like rising of autoimmune and our bodies attacking itself and our immune system's confused, it's like, just that your body is literally so connected to your soul so connected to everything the energy the consciousness that it was telling you giving you the right information that you had to look at this mm -hmm. deep personal wound and issue and big decision you had to make and then once you did that like the symptom subsided it just blows me away how intelligent our bodies are and cool. they're part of us they're a, they're a, yeah. an, you know an expression of our consciousness uh -huh. and constantly giving us the answers in subtle and not so subtle ways <laughs> yeah you know? the more obvious ones <laughs> so i've talked about this on the on the uh, before and you know i went through three different podcasts with three different types of practitioners one was an energy healer one was kind of free your mind, mind architect Peter, and then one was a sports psychologist. And I was sharing that I used to be a runner. Now I'm training for a marathon to raise money for my friend's foundation. Mm. Um, I haven't, you know, before training, I didn't run for six years because I didn't run while I was pregnant. Then I gave birth, natural childbirth. And for whatever the reason, but there's clearly a reason and a message, um, whether I went back to activity too soon or, but my pelvic floor didn't heal properly. So my sphincter on my bladder, I'm assuming, I haven't gotten it properly diagnosed, but there's an imbalance in the pelvic floor musculature um, that's affecting my bladder. So, and also when I read in the metaphysical 
anatomy book, bladder is also like fear and decision mm. and, or fear of loss of control in your life, which we talked about with Peter and, and the others. But you know, I feel something in your throat yeah. when you talk about that. Yeah. I feel like a taste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which has to do with so your expression. Yeah. Uh, with being yourself. Yeah, it's like very intense. So maybe there's some disgust there yeah. somewhere. So yeah. long story short, the marathon's in a month. Um, I've run 10 miles, but depending on what's going on in my life, like if I sleep well, there, there was one time where I had these like frequency treatments. I just went through some Lyme treatment, which we can look at as well. Mm. Um, but the next day, like no, no pee trickled out. So like everything felt very robust and strong, but I'm also going through like this emotionally, a little bit distressing period. Again, my throat is closing up. Um, mm. And just, just general like overwhelm and intense energies in the world, right? All of that to say, I'm running and the bladder still leaks urine, which is not glamorous to talk about on the mm -hmm. podcast, but you're here and I'm gonna take advantage of it. <laughs> <laughs> because I wanna run and it brings me so much joy and I want to finish off the training and have a really great race, not worried about, you know, what wearing black leggings to hide this fact that the pee's just dripping out. Mm. Some days better than others. Can we look at that together right now and mm -hmm. try to transmute it? <laughs> 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 what is my bladder telling me? <laughs> so you think when when you run, the bladder is like basically dripping? It, I don't even feel maybe even the urge to pee. It's just that it just leaks out. Mm -hmm. So on any given day there's a, it could be like soaked pants i have to wear a sweatshirt around my waist so people can't see that it's just like hmm. you know you kind of like page your pants and then after a while it stops because it's dribbled out so i go pee right before and then whatever's left in my bladder that doesn't release fully just trickles out as i run mm -hmm. so i have to run in black leggings to hide that mm -hmm. well let's see what's inside okay so close your eyes. Mm. So we're going to take a deep, deep, deep breath in and we're going to hold it. Okay. Keep like bringing a lot of gold in your soda, in your lungs, everywhere. And then you're going to expel all the stress, negativity, tension, fear. <sighs> So you're going to silence your mind and you realize that you have the power to do so. You're the queen inside. You just stop it. And you're going to bring your awareness into your heart, around your heart space and gently moving your energy counterclockwise. So you can see or feel like a liquid gold Oh, like energy, which is gently swirling in a counterclockwise motion and which is making space, oh, which is opening, clearing, making space for the light, for the force. And everything you don't want, any thoughts, distraction, inside, outside, just let them drop into the vortex, into the void. You don't take care of them. And so we're going to gently move this energy down, still swirling counterclockwise around your sacrum area, you know, around your root, to the mother, and anchor it, anchor it into the earth, into Gaia, to ground you, to root you on the earth. And to activate your whole body energy, fluidify, optimize. And then we're going to go up around your third eye, connection to the spirit, to the beyond, to the father, to the sky. And you're going to open that also counterclockwise, seeing like a beautiful turquoise gold light 
connecting your whole consciousness to the universe intelligence to the heart intelligence and the body intelligence How do you feel now, Kelly? Feel good. You feel good? Mm -hmm. Do you feel the energy? Mm -hmm. Where do you feel it? Oh, well, I'm still in my head. I'm swirling the vortex in my head. Are you in your head? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I Meaning the energy, I'm just up there, my awareness. So let's come back around your heart. So you feel it swirling? Mm hmm. So describe me a little bit what you feel. I'm going to follow your sensation. Mm. Um. Well, I was seeing it as an image, of just like kind of like a golden, like wispy energy. It's kind of like the size of a, I don't know, sound bowl, and it's just going mm. around here. But it feels a little expansive now. It's expanding. Yeah, really make no effort. Uh, just relax completely into it. There's no right and wrong. Uh, it's no competition or test. Just a low the flow. It's like very a soft movement. No, it's not so much with your mind. It's like I don't know why, but it keeps wanting to go clockwise. Is that weird? Okay, let's go clockwise. You need to trust your feeling. So clockwise, you activate more. Now, you know, now we've been opening. Now you're going to manifest, activate what you want. Let's start whirling clockwise. All around you. It means you open now you need to activate the power. And what we're going to do is we, we're going to bring this energy in your bladder. So tell me when you can feel it. Okay. So what do you feel? Um, it's almost like a pulsing. A pulsate? Like pulsating, yeah. Uh huh. Very good. Is it pulsating normally? Is it fast? Is it slow? Now it feels like it's kind of opening. It's opening. Like it was like a pierce, like opening. Uh huh. So go, go into it. Go into your bladder now. I don't even know where my bladder is. I'm just going. You where don't the care. Sensation exactly. Is, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's exactly what you should do. Okay. It's not anatomy here. It's energetic. We're going basically to the zero point of the bladder, to the energetic okay. source. So what do you feel when you're inside? Um. It just feels like it's like um, like a little cloud, like puffing, like exploding. Mm. So go into this cloud and tell me what you see or feel. Mm. Ugh, now I'm getting emotional. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. so this Like, like black ink uh-huh go 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 into the black ink don't be afraid bring your light bring your consciousness into it uh. now it's like dissipating yeah it's like kind of dissolving dissolving exactly Whew. You can ask also your guidance. What is it? Okay. Did you receive it? I think so. Is it something you can share or not? I just said it like looped together fear, guilt, shame. Mm. And they came as a package. It was a package. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it like all one word. So you, so you see clearly what that means for you? Now it's saying anger. Anger, that's usually the main one. 
So go go into this anger completely, embrace it fully. Mm -hmm. Do you know anger about what? I think so. You think so? Yeah, I don't want to share it though. Okay. But I, I do. So now that you see it, that's why I wanted you to see, you know, so you can understand. Okay. So now we're going to flush it out of your system. So use the counterclockwise vortex and you bring, you know, this, this anger, this stuck energy, this dark energy into the light, basically moving out of your system, moving out of your bladder. Just pouring a lot of light into it, a lot of love. Do you feel it leaving? Mm -hmm. Very good. So make sure you remove everything. You should feel very open, see a lot of light when you're done. And if it doesn't go fully, that means there's still some attachments. So you just look at them and you remove them. It's completely leaving now. Yeah. Yeah, I feel it. Very good. Mm. So now what are we going to do? We could go on, but for the sake of this exercise, now yeah. we're going to rebuild. So you're going to go clockwise again. Okay. And now you're going to insert everything you want into this bladder, into your life. You're going to reprogram huh, the functioning of, of that organ, but above all of your life huh, from this trauma. The peace, the love, the faith, the trust, everything you really, really want. You create your own vortex of light and you bring it into it. And now you create like a very dense, you know, strong ball of light, you know, the vortex around your heart space to remember, you know, that feeling, expansion of peace of faith, gratitude. How do you feel now? I feel great. Feel great? Mm -hmm. Grateful. Yeah, that's very important. Grateful to the experience. Grateful to the person who bring the experience. Grateful to God, to the creation. So let's thank everyone, all the light forces, all the guides, the teachers, the healers, the guardians all the beings who support our growth. Thank you so much. Let's thank each other for this nice little journey together. Thank you, Kelly, for mm. trusting, opening. Thank you. And let's thank ourselves for doing the work, for transmuting, transforming consistently. We deserve it too. <laughs> 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 and then we're back to this nice, oh, wow. nice 3D reality. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. Thank you. That was crazy. <sighs> yeah. You could see it, huh? Yeah. Can, do you see? As you're walking, do you see anything? I, I mainly give the vision, basically, that I have. When I work with people, it's like, you know, like, I'm opening the space for you to mm -hmm. see. I can also, I, I receive things, you know, like, but mainly the vision, I, I give it to you. Like, uh, but I, I also see some, uh, when it's open, you know, I see light. When it's uh, closed, I see in dark, so I, I, mm. I sense. That's why I realized I'm doing something when I work with a group. It's like, I, I give that energy so people can find it inside. Because I want people to find it. If it's me telling you this, that's why I ask you, what is it telling you? You know, ask your guide, you know, ask your mm -hmm. guidance. Because this, this, specific trauma has something to tell you and you have the tools you know, like mm. to access it that's what's really empowering and that technique the more you do it the quicker it is the easier it is the deep and it, and you can do it longer we did it short yeah. you can spend an hour doing that you get a lot of information mm. a lot of downloads like uh, and sometimes you can do it really quick you with someone yeah. you stress you don't want that energy you, yeah. you do your vortex you remove it you know counterclockwise so it's so practical yeah. and so simple so I use it to do complex stuff, to bring people into the future. I use different vortices, you know, build a grid. 
and I use it very simple like that just when I was driving at yeah. some point I was starting oh my energy is not good anymore like LA you know all the traffic yeah. all the things I was listening uh, to your podcast which was great but I was you know into different frequencies like yeah. that I stop everything I do my vortex I say I don't want to be like that then I feel oh the, uh, okay. the light coming back so it's like a hygiene yeah just and you do it heart you do it at the sh- all the chakras. I did this just... one. I do the main simple one. I do around the heart only. Okay. That's the most simple one. Yeah. Then you can do it here, here, you know, to strengthen. Yeah. Then you can do above on the sides. You know, there's different application of it. But the core one, you just do it around your heart. It's your center, mm-hmm. and you you remove everything you don't want. Contact yeah. Contact. And then you, you you close, and you can apply that to specific stuff like that. You bring it into your cells. I'm just working with someone with breast cancer at the beginning. I know it's it's done. She told me wow. I did I did the, your practice before she met me. I received you healed. Wow. She told me that when we met. I said, oh, and I felt she was right. And I asked her. Oh. She told me, no, it was clear. No? Wow. And, and I checked with my own guidance. I told me, yeah, she just needed to do the work now, of yeah. course. But the, the route is already taken away. Wow. I was like, wow, that's, that's amazing. Wow. <laughs> I keep being surprised at what people do. That's you know, like so cool. When they apply it. Yeah. And what about like at the end and I've, I've been doing the last couple of weeks or maybe a week because last week was wild I worked with this healer that was gifted to me and it was all about you know getting out of like becoming aware observer of the mind and the ego thoughts and stories and how it just like you start to spiral down in the story and then she was like drop into the heart and and so I've just been bringing my awareness to the heart a mm. lot which is yeah. what we just did as well and then I interviewed someone else on Friday and her thing is all about the power of the hearts and dropping back into the heart so it's mm-hmm. this heart space and being in that energy is like and that's our electromagnetic field like that's really shifting frequency um, so after we were done even though I felt everything saw the visions you know experience my mind tried to vocalize like oh you just bypassed that mm-hmm. or what if it doesn't work or you know mm-hmm. like that's where my mind started going and then I was like okay just drop back into the heart that's yeah. just a story do you get that a lot from the people you work with or how do you what do I how do I not buy into that or um what you know not get sucked hooked by that energy by doing it regularly basically because then you start proving to your mind that it works mm-hmm. you know, like uh, so the mind comes like me when I was doing that. I was like, I, I, now not anymore because I do it each time it works. You know? yeah. So I have like confidence. Yeah. But for a while, I, I you don't really know, you know if it's gonna work. It would work, but I would say each time I would think it's a miracle. <laughs> so the mind would come, and so I would keep just doing my job. I let it, you know, say, yeah, it's not gonna work. It's this. It's not finished. Or, and I keep doing what I what I feel. Mm-hmm. So it's like a radio that I put in the background. You know, the radio is in the car. I cannot really stop it. It's gonna speak but I don't pay attention to it. Okay. I go into my inner space and I trust what I see and progressively the radio is going to lose its energy because you're the one feeling it. Got it. If you don't give it any more energy attention, it's going to subside, subside and it's coming to the background mm. and, and then you don't need it anymore. So so it's like it's like everything, this technique, but it's the more you practice it, the more you do it. The power of this vortex is because sometimes it's hard to go into the heart. Go to me, yeah, go into the heart, the yeah. heart. Well, that gives you a movement. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like you move inside instead of just trying to do that you start moving and naturally you're gonna align just like when you feel stuck you jump you know you move your body mm-hmm. phew, your body is gonna expand it's easier than just uh, you know doing a few movements like you, you expand yeah. so the vortex it helps you creating this this movement inside and connect with what you were saying with your true self because your true self is energy it's a vortex and our soul literally it's a double vortex of energy so the countless vortices inside, but the, the essence of it, you know, like in science, it's what they, they, they understood finally. <laughs> it's like it's it's literally a vortex of energy. So when you do that, you realign with your true nature, the nature of the Earth, which is also a vortex, the nature of the galaxy, which is the nature of the yeah. universe. The Taurus. You talk about the Taurus. Taurus, exactly. Okay. That, that movement, basically. So you realign with that, and so things within yourself realign. The energy can flow, and and yeah, we are perfect machines. You know, like uh, when when we we align with what our essence is. You know, right now it's been very distorted, <laughs> yeah. very twisted and damaged and pushed down. But the machine is just there. It's amazing. You just need attention. Yeah. You know, like just like your immune cells teach a lot of people how to kill, you know, like, like destroy viruses or things like that or bacteria. Yeah, your whole system is geared for that. If you connect with it, you say, okay, come on, <laughs> we're going to flush yeah. that. They're so happy yourselves. And so you can do that. 
you can go inside of them like we did. You just go at a deeper level. No, you went into your bladder, uh -huh. and it's not your physical bladder. It's, it's like the energy yeah. of the bladder. So that's when the healing happens. Then that sending the information to the bladder, you know, to the cells, which gonna reprogram and, and which gonna, which are going to heal you know, progressively. So by working here at the zero point, everything basically fall, fall back into place. The time it needs to, because you also have your time for healing, you know, yeah. for going through things. Yeah. You mentioned earlier, um, I'm like, do we go deeper into the viruses and talk about that? But, th but that's, so you just go down to a, like a more cellular level when you do that and or so yeah. w when you're so for instance like whether it's COVID or flu or yeah. um, herpes so you can if you're starting to get sick you can do the energy work and and flush the virus or, yeah. or destroy the virus like walk us through that real quick when, when it's a, a virus for instance like COVID or flu or, or, or whatever that is for me is the same principle it's it's a frequency you know? okay. everything is frequencies like you say you try yeah. you know this line machine but you can access that without a machine. So you go inside, you can use the vortex to bring you inside, and you notice that frequency. Sometimes yeah, I can see an entity, like a little demon, you know, bacteria, mm -hmm. you know, like sometimes it's more, depending if it's if it's natural or if it's not natural, mm. you know, sometimes it's more artificial. So oh whatever is coming, then I ask my guidance when I see it, I say, okay, destroy that through the whole field, basically this whole, this whole frequency, because right. I, I cannot destroy all of them like that, but yeah. we have a power to do that. So I feel that and I ask, okay, now identify that and now flush it from the whole system. Wow. And we did that with Adam, actually with a big group, you know, 200, 300 people, you know, doing yeah. that immune force practice. It's crazy what people have been With Catherine, healing. Dr. Clinton. Yeah, with Catherine yeah. also, yeah. We did several like that. Yeah, with Catherine it was, yeah, people got like rid of like a lot of stuff. One who was feeling the energy running through all the symptoms she had. She didn't understand what she had. It was like flushing all, all the different centers. One, it was the the, the, the hair piece. Uh, they can apply it to different stuff. One, it was eyes infections, you know, which was gone. You know, like wow. a, one, it was a tendinitis, you know, was gone. And an ankle that was locked that opened the next day were crazy, you know, like uh, like yeah. in one one session, like the people who've never worked with me. You know, like, uh, and so you just walked them through this meditation. How long was the meditation? It was 30, 40 minutes usually. So it, we do a journey a bit longer than that, you know, and, and but everybody's doing their own stuff. We use our energy to connect together, to access the field. That's what I like with that. Yeah, it's not it like amplifies we do all the field. On someone, yeah. Basically, we all use that, that group field, but then the way I design it, it's like everybody can access their own stuff yeah. using everybody's energy and cool. like flush their things. So some is a trauma, some is physical, some is, I'm surprised each time because people use it to whatever they want to get rid of. And it works you know, for a lot of people. It's a big amount of people. It's not just a few, you know, it's wow. like a lot of uh, different degrees as always, but it's- uh, How cool. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> what, cool what a cool <laughs> mission you have. <laughs> um, <laughs> Before we wrap up, you mentioned earlier, and I think we should just touch on it for two minutes, um, how there's, you know, last week it felt very intense. There was astrological organization happening. There was eclipse energy. There was solar flare energy. Um, you said that there's a lot of, di like, energy. How did you explain that on the planet? So there's right a lot now? of energy available right now okay. know, on both sides. There's a lot of dark energy, dense energy, and there's a lot of light. As you can, so things are intensified. It's going to be like that for, for the next probably five, ten years. Like a lot, a lot. There's a huge transformation right now. So this is the awakening. That's the breakdown of the old systems that yeah. no longer align with humanity. Exactly. And then an it's awakening of basically. people's missions. and. Yeah. So it's with people. It's within the earth. It's within everything. It's not just the human, you know, who are yeah. the earth. It's all the light beings also. So there is like that massive crust and darkness of old stuff that's coming up. So if you look at that, yeah, there's wars, there's people dying, there's crazy stuff, there's child abuse, there's like horrible stuff you know, happening. We know that it just amplifies coming more to the surface. But there's an amazing light coming through that to transform that because people don't want that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at least many <laughs> react, you know, try to understand. So we are given that disease to see and to understand so we can heal it and transform it as a species because mm -hmm. humans indeed were impacting a lot the earth you know we're not just the earth but we're a big part of it we, we our frequency is strong so we are shown that so we so we can transform it and it's gonna go through a little while you no know? like when we do work to go into the future to really see different timelines and 
I did it with different people with the same the timelines because I have mine, no? and we saw similar stuff, which was very interesting. Wow. So a lot in 2035, very dense, a lot of chaos. No? At that moment, everybody a lot of fear. But through that, boom, like a new light was emerging because there was the forces trying to separate, to divide, you know, to, <laughs> to I better rule. <laughs> and, but it was so much chaos no? yeah. that basically at some point the divine order was standing up because the divine order is using that, is using everything. Yeah. And so, and we saw then another timeline around 20, 2055, you know, or 2050, when we were starting feeling, you know, and being in that new earth, you know, in that wow. when that, that being flushed, it's a possibility, you know, timeline is, but there's right now, uh, and that's why I'm working on the core of my work now, it's gonna be this, to bring people there so they can see for themselves. And so we work together on changing this timeline, because just like we do it now within your body, we can do that for the earth when we come as a group. You know, yeah. like we can change frequencies like that. And so there's some karma we need to go through. We go through these wars, you know, they need to go through. They, yeah. they need people need to die. You know, it, it's part of like uh, the, the death and rebirth cycle. But we can accelerate that. We can smooth, smoothen it, you know, we can. And the people who are going to choose to go through that, to really embrace it, you know, right, they're going to they're gonna grow. They're going to yeah. do whatever happens. You find a place where you're happy. OK, it's war. OK, it's chaos. Let's let's go through it. Uh, yeah. like, like like positive, let's transmit that. It's not agreeable, it's better, you know, to be to be on the beach in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's part but of life. They chose as well. they chose to come in. We all we yeah. all chose that. If we're here, we chose that. So let's let's embrace it. Okay. Uh, like let's bring joy into it, let's bring understanding into it and let's do our work to, to shift it. Uh, okay. Thank you for that. <laughs> Where can people find you and ha access your work? Well the main thing uh, right now it's my website. So it's uh, K, K A, which means the, the life life force, the soul for the Egyptians, energetics. Okay. K energetics. K energetics.com. And uh, I suggest to sign up on the newsletter because that's mainly what I use is emails right now. I have an Instagram also, K Energetics, a YouTube channel, the same name, which I need to I have a lot of content now, I need to do something about it. <laughs> so you can go there. But the website is probably the best, the best place to to, to stay in tune and and I highly suggest to download the, um, the Vortex. It's on it, it's free. You can download it, you can practice it. And then if you're interested to join the community, we have a community now also, or the program you now to go deeper, basically. Okay. It. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming here and sharing your incredible story and your work, and also hopefully, you know, walking me through that amazing experience. Well, thank you, Kelly, for inviting me. It was a, a blessing and a pleasure. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Heal with Kelly podcast. Be sure to tune in every Thursday for more empowering wisdom and inspiring healing stories. And make sure you hit the follow button on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts so you don't miss that one episode that holds the answer you've been searching for. Oh, and if you found this episode inspiring, please rate, review, and share Heal with Kelly so that we can grow our audience and reach more people. We truly appreciate it. Lots of love.